to learn. Okay. I had a gift to offer to the world, and now I had a way to do this. Reconnecting is when we bring her back to our bones. I needed to come back to her. I needed to come back to say that who I want to be more of every single day. The girl with curiosity and wonder. At six, I had this burning curiosity of how long does a stove stay hot once you turn the burner off? The babysitter had just turned the stove off. As soon as she got out of the room, I went over the stove and stuck my entire hand on the burner. Woo, yeah, woo. Pain was good for me that day, why? Because if I had not experienced pain, I would have held my hand on that hot stove and I would have burned all my fingers to the bone. It's when we remember the feeling she felt, the emotions, she experienced those times in her life that changed her forever. Negative emotions like pain are good for us for a second. It is an alert signal. And once we recognize we're there, we have a chance to move from that negative mind to a more neutralized place. Bringing that word back into my life has meant so much. Go ahead and put that word in. Let's see what happens. Let's light up this board. The year is 2016, and I want nothing more than to get a TEDx talk. It's like the pinnacle when you're a speaker. And I applied to every TEDx talk that came to my local area in Ohio. In 2017, my application made it in the room. 2018, I was brought in for an audition. And in 2019, the moment happened. And I thought, this is the moment. And I thought, what? a better TEDx women's talk than reminding people how awesome they are today based on how awesome they were back then. And the barrier was to my own power, to this idea of agency, of I am actually the person who's in charge of me every single day. And I made it to the final round interview. Wait for it. <laughs> and I got rejected. Let me tell you something, my hand was on the hot stove for a while. We see some of these things in other people that deep down we know we have inside ourselves. We just haven't figured out how to pull them out yet. When I first learned about the imposter syndrome, which materializes as continual doubt and accomplishments and fear of being exposed as a fraud, you recognize that you've built this wall or fence because of the way you've seen the world unfold around you. And I classify these barriers as things like time, money, access to resources, family responsibilities. Okay, how can I turn this problem into a gift and opportunity? And I said, you know what? I'm gonna create my own stage. So I invited whoever wanted to to join me on my Zoom room on a Wednesday night and I gave a presentation called Let Her Out, Reclaim Who You've Always Been. Reconnect to her. We can actually recognize what's in the way. Then we can actually start to let her out. Your let her out journey is going to look very different than the person next to you and the person next to you and the person next to you. And the next day I had a meeting with the book coach and I said, hey Kathy, I think I have an idea for a book. So I sent it over to her and she's like, Natalie, not only do you have your book, but you have the outline, go write the book. Who quits her job in the middle of a global pandemic? And then the answer came to me, it said, someone whose dreams are bigger than her fears. I think that's what's keeping a lot of her in instead of letting her out. So on November 20th, 2020, it debuted as an Amazon number one bestseller. Let her out, reclaim who you've always been. Every outcome and circumstance can be turned into a gift. But reconnecting is when we bring her back into our bones. When we remember what it felt like to be her, when we remember what the emotions were that we felt. The antidote is empathy, having empathy for yourself. We are our own worst critics. And let me tell you, your clients can feel true empathy. But they also know and can feel it when you're really with them. And the way to get there is by opening up the sage region of your brain. And so I did something very radical that my high school classmates would have voted me the least likely person to ever get a tattoo. And two weeks ago, it's exactly what I did. It says, choose love. In those moments when I want to be angry and frustrated, I just remind myself that there's a choice. Internal barriers, the little voice that's sitting on your shoulder. And it keeps us up at night, and it reminds us, how could we have screwed up again? They're gonna figure you out. And it sits on the shoulder, and it just whispers, oh, stay quiet. I'll be happy when I move into that bigger house. I'll be happy when I get that new car. It doesn't allow us to be happy with what's happening right now.
my daughters who are now nine and 11, I'm saying, dear Mary Beth and Katie, I don't ever want your gender to define you, limit you or make you afraid. I want you to be who you are. I want you to dream big dreams and make even bigger plans. Be strong, be brave, be you. Every day I will celebrate you. Love, mommy. You have to take care of yourself so you don't get to that resentment and burnout place. This is meant to be the start of a conversation for all of us to really think about bringing her into the world more fully. You deserve to be fully present in your own life. We're going to reconnect to her. You wake up and you say, when is it going to be my turn? Because this was the best day of my life. This was the day I found my voice. Those were the lessons I took with me into the workforce. And one day I wanted to be a boss who could inspire other people. But now is where it gets real. On March 13th, 2020, my dad was diagnosed with vascular dementia. Didn't take long to find study after study that connects chronic stress with the release of hormones that can lead to diseases such as dementia and Alzheimer's. And in January of 2022, my dad passed away. He was 68 years old. I do this work because I want each and every one of you and the people you love to live well past those 68 years. I am convinced if my dad had had tools like this, he might never have gotten that disease and he might still be with us today. So in his absence, I stand on stages like this encouraging people like you to take your mental well-being seriously. Take the pause in your day so you can live a long, healthy, productive, and satisfying life.